Have your way in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let your glory fill this temple. Let your power overflow. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship. Oh, my God. 
And you can be seated if you want to feel like it. We're going to have this evening's ushers come at this time. You give the Lord, he'll bless you for giving it. Worship with us, we sing. service to our pastor, give him this pulpit with an apostolic amen. amen. 
There's a stranger in town. He's giving sight to the blind. He's the great emancipator turning water to wine. He even healed this man who was bound by disease. What manner of man is this whose voice can control the seas? Some say he is the great I am the prophet spoke of. Some say he is Emmanuel, the son of God. This stranger, oh, seven, stranger, stranger from Galilee, say, from Galilee. He is the man, say, he is the man from Galilee. Anybody know this man? Oh, there is a stranger in town. He's given sight to the blind. He is the great emancipator. He turned water to wine. He even healed this man who was bound by the time I ever heard Lee Stone King preach, he said this prayer. He said, Lord, let us hear the muffled footstep of the man from Galilee. And I just listened to that. I thought, man, he said, he's walking amongst us tonight. <sighs> Revelation said there was an angel came to church one time. He didn't come to measure the altar. He didn't come to measure the pews. And he didn't come to measure the benches or the, or the laver. He didn't come to measure the tables of, of, of shoe bread or even the golden candlestick. He didn't even come for the altar of incense or even the holy of holies. He came to worship. He wanted to see the worshiper. He wanted to know who was worshiping. And he brought a stick to measure the worshiper. So my question tonight is not who is not here. My question is who is here. There's people that's sitting here tonight that's not here. I said there's people in this building tonight that's not really in this building. Your mind is somewhere else. And if the angel was here and he was measuring the worshiper when he finds you wanting, or even better yet, if Jesus Christ stepped in this building right now, would he know you by your praise and your worship to be a child of his? Or would he think that you're just another person sitting on a pew that's lost and confused and needs him? I come to tell you, there is somebody in this building Building. And if you don't know him, I would love to introduce you to him. His name is Christ Jesus. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Hey, hey, 
Jesus looked at 500 people and he said I am going to make sure that you understand what I say I'm going to speak very clearly I want all 500 of you to listen go back to Jerusalem and tarry there till you be endued from power from on high the problem was it was Pentecost Sunday was falling on a Memorial Day weekend And everybody went barbecuing. And everybody went on vacation. And by the time they actually got to church, there was only 120 of them there. Somehow 380 people had went on vacation. But 120 people showed up. And 120 people changed the life of 3,000 people in just a few moments. Because they became contagious with their praise and worship. And their speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. And this is that, Brother Allen. Somebody said, I want to know, how do we get that? And Peter said, I'm not ashamed to tell you. I've come to tell you you got to repent of your sins and you got to be baptized in the only saving name for there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved and if you can do that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and this promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call what are you saying pastor I'm saying it didn't matter who was there or who was missing, I should say, it mattered who was there. It didn't matter how many people didn't show up, it mattered how many people did show up. I'm gonna tell you something, Thomas missed the moment of the miraculous because he wasn't at the place where God was uh, when God was trying to meet his disciples. Uh, and you can miss your moment of the miraculous uh, because you decide you're not gonna show up uh, when the church shows up. And I'm not just talking about being present uh, in the house of God. Uh, I'm talking about being present uh, in the presence of of God when his spirit fills the temple I got my spirit with his spirit we're in tune we already talked before church started I'm gonna quit preaching and get out of the way but Alan's here tonight there's a little bit of preaching in me tonight for some reason Miracles happen. Miracles happen when God is there. And it only takes one other thing to have a miracle. You know what it is besides God? A need. If there's no needs, there's no miracles. So if you need something tonight, you're in the right place at the right time. You just need to show up in your spirit as well as your body. And we can see a miracle happen tonight. Praise the Lord. There's something getting ready to break in this place while this man preaches. And it's going to be for the people that are responding to the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you will, I'd like for you to clap your hands and welcome this man of God to this pulpit as we go into another night of revival. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord. Come on, let's praise him together. Oh, let's magnify the Lord together. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, what a beautiful presence of God. Is in this place tonight. Amen. The, surely the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. There is a miracle in this house tonight. Amen. There's anointing here. Amen. There's healing in this house. And I want the Lord to have his way. Amen. In this place tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We are honored to be here again tonight. Amen. In revival. Amen. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord is certainly moving in this place. 
Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Philippians 4 and verse 19. Amen. Sister Allen, amen, I believe will be singing maybe in a little while. Amen. Around the altar, the Lord moves. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. But my God, everybody say my God, shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Come on, would you lift your hands? to Jesus come on whisper his name speak his name Jesus come on would you pray to the Lord right now lift your hands lift your voice and I want you to pray come on God you know every need Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to reach over and grab your neighbor by the hand if it's appropriate. I want you to pray a prayer of faith into their life right now. <laughs> Come on, I want you to pray the prayer of faith into their life. Come on, pray the prayer of faith. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated if you like. While you're being seated, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. And just whisper his name. Jesus. Come on, come on, speak his name. Jesus. 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 Mm, hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Clap your hands to the Lord. And let's give him praise together. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We are honored to be a part of this revival, this great church. We give you pastor, his wife, honor tonight. Amen. In this beautiful congregation that's in this place. If you're a guest tonight, thank you for being here. And we certainly want the Lord to move in your life. Thank you for being here tonight. Amen. If I could just for a few moments tonight. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Paul writes and he says, But my... God shall supply all your need. All your need. And uh, the pastor, amen. Brother, you just, amen. I, I was standing back there hoping, man, go ahead. Obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. Go, 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 go. Amen. He was on it, amen, plugged into it tonight. Amen. And I appreciate the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And uh, he mentioned uh, needs. Amen. You had to have a need to have a miracle. Amen. So I want to preach tonight from this thought. Many needs, but just one God. Many needs, but just one God. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Many needs, but just one God. I begin to look at this scripture today as I begin to read it and think about it. And I, I, I believe that uh, what Paul was wanting to relate to the church and to humanity came not from other people's experiences, but Paul wanted to relay to the church Amen. A burden and a desire from his heart. Amen. When Paul said, but my God shall supply your needs, he didn't write and say, but my God shall supply my need. I believe that Paul was able to say, my God shall supply all of your need. Yeah. Amen. Right. The reason that Paul was able to say, my God is able to supply all of your need is because God had already supplied all of his needs. Right. Amen. What Paul was going to relay in this in this scripture, amen, was nothing more than a personal relationship with God. Amen. The, the, very, the very beginning of verse 19, Paul says, but my God. Amen. There was a relationship there. There was a trust there. There was a, a, a divine connection between him and his God. Amen. He didn't say their God. He didn't say his God. He didn't say her God. He said, my God shall supply all of your needs. Amen. Uh, for Paul to be able to say this, amen, with faith. Amen. Come on. For Paul to be able to say this without reservation that God would meet your need. In my need, it lets me know without a doubt that Paul already knew, amen, who the healer was. He already had a relationship with the deliverer. He already walked with the master. He already had a relationship with the one that can speak peace in the middle of the storm. Amen. Paul was able to say, God will do this in your life because God had already showed up in his life. He met him on the dusty road. He met him when they stoned him. He met him in the shipwreck. He met him when they put stripes on his back. He met him when they beat the living daylights out of him. Come on, somebody. Amen. God was able, amen, to move in Paul's life. And because Paul had a personal relationship with God that hell could not do nothing about, the devil hated, amen, because God rose up a man of God out of sin, out of rebellion. Come on, somebody. Amen. Man, Paul was able to say, this is my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul, amen, thought about the times, amen, that he had a need that, didn't, that needed to be supplied. Amen. Paul was able to say, my God. Amen. The very first step for you receiving your miracle is understanding that you cannot make it on your own. You cannot survive by yourself. Amen. You don't have the power. You don't have the authority. Amen. Gold can't buy it. Silver can't buy it. Diamond Diamonds can't buy it. Amen. The world can't give it. And the devil can't take it away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's got to be a faith. There's got to be a confidence. Amen. On the inside of your soul. Amen. That you know that I've got a God. Amen. When the doctor shows up and puts the x-ray on the wall. Amen. And he says there's nothing that I can do. Amen. There is an individual that can stand and say, wait a minute. My God of God. Amen. That can make a way out of no way. Come on. When the judge shows up and says, I can't do
do nothing about this. Come on, it takes faith, amen, for you to be able to stand in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your tragedy, in the midst of your circumstance, and speak to the wind, and speak to your adversary, and say, get behind thee, Satan. I've got a God that's going to make a way. I've got a God that's going to show up. Oh, I come to speak to somebody tonight, amen, and tell us, amen, you need to get something in your vocabulary, amen, that needs to become a part of you. It needs to become a part of who you are. It become, needs to be, become a part of how you talk, how you address your giant, how you look at your storm, how you look at your tragedy or your circumstance, how you speak when you walk through the shadow of the, come on, through the valley of the shadow of death. There needs to be something to rise up on the inside of you. I've got a God that will not leave me, that will not forsake me, that would come on. I've got a God that knows my name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my God. Amen. Amen. Before Paul said, God will meet your need. He wanted you to know that the God that was going to meet your need is my God. Come on. Hey Amen. My God. My God. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. When there's cancer, I've got a God. When there's diabetes, I've got a God. Come on. Hey Amen. When there's a bad doctor's report, I've got a God. Come on. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. There needs to be something in our spirit. Hey Amen. Where faith rises, confidence rises, trust rises. Hey Amen. It gets down on the very inside of us that we can relate to other people. Not, but not based on what somebody else preached. Not based on what somebody else felt. Not based on what somebody else said. Not based on what somebody else prayed down. And I just hung around their fire a little bit. Come on, but there's got to be something on the inside of you that raises up. My God. Oh, lift your hands and say, my God. My God. My God shall supply all of your need. Amen. Amen. Your need. Most likely, under the sound of my voice tonight, amen, there, there's probably every kind of need, amen, that can may be made mention here tonight. Amen, there may be somebody here tonight that received a diagnosis of cancer. There may be somebody here tonight that received a diagnosis of heart trouble. Come on. Hey, man, there may be somebody here tonight that is battling a deep depression that overwhelms you and just comes out of nowhere. Anxiety overcomes you, and you get the shakes. Come on, you, you quit drinking a long time ago. Come on, you quit smoking a long time ago. Hey, man, but for some reason or another, hey, man, you get shaky and you get jittery, and then all of a sudden a feeling of fear overwhelms you. Hey, man, there's some tonight that may be having trouble, amen, in your marriage. Come on, somebody. Amen, there may be some here tonight that's having trouble, amen, with your son or with your daughter. There may be some here tonight, amen, that is battling leukemia, amen, or loss of eyesight or loss of hearing. Come on now. Amen, there may be somebody here tonight, amen, that just seemingly your life has fell apart and it's one bad report after another bad report. Amen, I come to preach to us tonight, amen, that there's many needs that's represented in this house tonight, but I've got good news to bring. There's only one God, and his name is Jesus. He's above all, he's through all, and he's in. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hey man, you can be seated. His name is Jesus. Hey man, now there are gods. Hey man, there's false gods of hay. There's false gods of wood. There's false gods of stubble. There's false gods. Hey man.
amen, idols, amen, that you can resurrect up in your life, amen, false gods everywhere you turn, amen, there's many different religions, there's many different false gods, come on, amen, but I want to preach to you tonight that there's only one God, come on, amen, there's many different needs in this house, there may be cancer, there may be diabetes, there may be leukemia, there may be back trouble, there may be neck trouble, there may be foot trouble, come on somebody, there may be broken hearts, broken lives, come on, messed up dreams, but I come to tell you tonight, there's one God, his name is Jesus, he's a healer, he's a deliverer, he's a way maker, he's the peace speaker. He's the first. He's the last. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning. He's the ending. There is no other God. Oh, I come to tell us tonight. Amen. Hear ye, O Israel. Come on. Come on. Hear ye, O Israel. Come on. There is. Come on, his name is Jesus. There is no other name given under heaven whereby men can be saved. His name is Jesus. Come on, he's the one that can heal you. He's the one that can deliver you. He's the one that can put your broken life. Come on, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Lift your hands and love him right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and love him right now. Jesus. You can be seated. Come on, reach over to somebody and whisper his name. Jesus. Jesus. Hey Amen. I'm not talking about Jim Jones. I'm not talking about a religion, amen, that they're coming back on a spaceship one day and going to pick you up and take you away from your problems. Come on. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about Buddha. I'm not talking about Muhammad. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, I'm not talking about a God of wood, hay, or stubble, of gold or silver, but I'm talking about a God. Come on, his name is Jesus. He's the one that conquered death. He's the one that conquered hell. He's the one that conquered the grave. He's the one that not only went to the cross, but left the cross and went to the grave. And when he left the grave, come on, somebody, he left it empty. Come on, there's no other God that can declare that there's a lot that can say I'm the Messiah there's a lot that can say I can heal you and I can deliver you come on but there's only one that has proven it there's only one God that will never leave you that will never forsake you there's only one God that can reach farther down than you can reach up his name is Jesus Come on, the demons have to flee. Come on, cancer's got to leave. Ah, I said his name. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 There is salvation. Come on, in none other. His name is Jesus. There's one Lord. There's one faith. There's one baptism. Come on, there's one God that's manifested in the flesh. Come on, there's one God that can heal you. There's one God that can deliver you. There's one God that can bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. His name is Jesus. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the Lily of the Valley and the Bright. And morning star. Come on, lift your hands and speak his name. Speak his name. Speak his name. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There may be some here tonight. Hey, man, that's dealing with different types of addictions. Come on, there's more addictions than just drugs. Or just crack or meth or heroin. 
or marijuana. There's more addictions than alcohol. Come on. Come on. There's more addictions than tobacco. Come on. There can be addictions called to where you can be addicted to pornography. Come on, somebody. Amen. Some people are addicted to gossip. Some people are addicted to backbiting. Come on, somebody. Some folks are addicted to tail bearing. Come on now. Amen. Some people, amen, are addicted to a lot of different types of things. Amen. I don't care what your addiction is. I don't care what your need is. I don't care. You Come on. About every day in the United States of America and around the world, amen, they come up and diagnose and they name a new disease. Come on now. Amen. They're, they're, they're coming up with them. Amen. A lot of times when they first name them, they're just letters or X's and O's with a few numbers. Come on and then time progresses, amen, and they diagnose it and, and they figure out and they put a name on to it. I come to tell you tonight, you can name it ever what you want to name it. Come on, but I got one name that's higher than any other name. I got one name, come on, that has power. Come on, that, hey, hey man, he, he's got all power and all authority. His name is... Jesus. I don't understand how it is. A lot of times we can look from the pew and we can look to the pulpit and we can think within ourselves. When we look at a man preaching about faith, preaching about healing and miracles and signs, it's real easy when we're in the pew because I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. If we're the one that's going through it, Come on, sometimes we can look at the man that's preaching and, say, and, we, and we say within ourselves, if he only knew what I was going through. Come on. If he, if he only understood my problem or my circumstance, if he only felt the pain of my brokenness. Come on. Amen. I come to you tonight and I preach this message not because, amen, of, of uh, inspiration. Come on. And it's good to be inspired. Come on. But I preach this message tonight because I can stand behind a pulpit and I can tell you without doubt and without reservation that there is a God. Come on, that can put lies back together again. There is a God that can reach in the middle of your pain, in the middle of your wound, in the middle of your tragedy, and give you peace that will pass all understanding. There is a God that cares about you and loves you. In 1998, it was Good Friday. The sky was blue, and seemingly it was a beautiful day outside. My wife and I took our two boys <laughs> to, our, to their grandparents' house. We dropped them off. We pulled out of the driveway that day. They were in the driveway waving at us. We waved by at them, just like we had done hundreds of times before. And we went to Tupelo, Mississippi on a date. On you husband and wives ever go on a date? Well, praise God. And so we went on our date, and we went to the Tupelo Flea Market. Yes, we did. We went to that flea market to hold hands. Look at junk. Make goo-goo eyes at one another. Come on. Amen. We do marriage retreats too. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we went on our date, and we got out. We parked in the parking lot there in Tupelo at the flea market, and we got out and we walked in. And when we got inside, 
over the intercom, they were paging my name. And so I took off and I, I went to the desk that they were paging me to. And I found it. And when I got there, they handed me a piece of paper. And on this piece of paper, it was a, uh, a note written to me telling me to call the hospital in Amory, Mississippi and had the phone number and uh, said it was an emergency for me to call as quick as I could. So as a parent, immediately you, you think, what's happened now? And we had two boys. <laughs> and so I thought, well, what is it this time? And so I called and I recognized the number because it was the hospital where my mother worked for many years as an RN. And when I called the number, they transferred me back to the emergency room. And a young lady that I went to high school with and graduated with answered the phone. And she spoke to me and she told me who she was. And, and she said, Mike, she said, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, she said, but your youngest son, Caleb, he was four years old. He, she said, your youngest son, Caleb, has been involved in a serious accident. And uh, I said, well, what, what, what is it? How bad is it? And she told me on the phone, she said, I, 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 I'm just going to be honest with you. She said, we've already lost him twice. And we've revived him and we've got his heart beating. And as soon as they get him stable, they're going to uh, life flight him to Memphis, Tennessee, the Children's Hospital. And I said, well, what, what happened? And they said he was out in the yard playing and somehow or another he got behind the riding lawnmower. And the riding lawnmower ran over our baby. Cut his leg off right at the knee. Cut it off. The only thing that it didn't cut was the main artery that ran down the back of his leg. The doctor later told us that if it would have just nicked that artery, that he would have bled out and there would have been no opportunity to revive him. But the lawnmower blade cut everything except for that artery. It didn't even touch it. And so we went to Memphis, Tennessee to the Children's Hospital. And when we walked in that place, we walked to the desk. And they said, wait just a minute. And, and just a few minutes later, a doctor came out and a priest came out with him. And they grabbed us by the hand and they took us to the side room. And they said, sit down, we want to talk to you. And and the doctor began to tell us, he, he said, your son is not going to make it through the weekend. It was Good Friday. He said, we've done everything that we could do. We've lost him three times. We've got him on life support now. We're trying to everything we can do to save him. And the doctor got up and they walked out. Before the door shut, the doctor stuck his head back in the, through the door and he looked at us and he said, I have one question. He said, what is it? He said, do you and your wife believe in prayer? And we said, yes, doc, we believe in prayer. And he looked at us and he said, I want you to pray. That when my hands have done all that I can do, that God can do so much more. <laughs> Our church family came, lined the halls of that hospital. Word began to spread real fast that our son had been in a serious accident and and most likely would not make it through the weekend. Our pastor came and our church family came. Friends began to show up. The hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, the halls were uh, lined with praying people. 
They begin to line that, and we filled the sanctuary at the children's hospital. It was so many people that the sanctuary was full, and the and the halls were lined with family and friends. And oh God! And so, a few hours later, the doctor came and got us and said, "We want you to come, and we want you to see your son." And so we walked in that hospital room, and when we walked in that hospital room, uh, we could hardly recognize our baby as his head was swollen the size of a basketball, and his body was swelled, and his hands were swelled, and so much so that they split open, and they began to bleed, and his feet split, split open, and they began to bleed, and, and, and lifelines running through his body. And so we went in and we seen him and the only thing that we could recognize that day, that dreadful night on Good Friday was that cotton top. We called him cotton top because he had white hair and he had blue eyes and his grandpa called him cotton top. And so we went in that hospital room and we began to pray with him and we cried and we wept and and we'll never forget that that weekend was probably the longest weekend of our life as we prayed and we sought God. And, and Friday came and went and nothing happened. And uh, Saturday came and went and nothing happened. And Sunday came and went and nothing happened. And friends and family had to go back to their jobs on Monday and and, and, and the devil just showed up. And, and uh, I can only be transparent and be honest with you because I, I, just, I like to be honest. And the adversary showed up and said, look what living for God will get you. And look what you pay your tithes and you give your offering and you're faithful to church. And you've, and, and you've been in the ministry and you've helped other people. Now, now look what this has got you. And uh, uh, seemed like hell had unleashed against us and our life had been turned upside down. Amen. And the adversary showed up that weekend. And Monday morning, our son was still alive. And he made it through the weekend. And, and a week passed and the doc said, I don't think he's going to make it, but keep praying. And another week passed and he was still alive. And another week passed and he was still alive. And another a week passed and he was still alive and my wife uh, she sang she sang a song and, and she wrote the words of this song down on a piece of paper and she put it on the chart when you come in the hospital this song was hanging on that bulletin board and ever ever little while during the day and during the night I would hear my wife begin to sing that song and it kind of went like this and I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. And I know the peace speaker. He controls the wind and rain. Come on, Jesus. And I could hear my wife sing that song through the night and through the day. And one night around midnight in a hospital room in Memphis, Tennessee, out of the darkness of that hospital room, we heard a voice that we hadn't heard in many days. That voice spoke to us in the very first words that our baby said. He said, Mama, I seen God. We ran to the bedside. And I was on one side and Mama was on the other. And I grabbed his hand and I said, baby, what did you say? He said, daddy, I seen God. I said, baby, when did you see God? He said, daddy, he said, that big old lawnmower ran over me. And he said, it hurt me. And he said, daddy, he said, I looked up. And he said, while I was looking up, that four-year-old baby said, while I was looking up, he said, the hand of God came down out of heaven and covered my body. And he said, Daddy, I seen angels all around me. And he said, Daddy, the lawnmower stopped and it couldn't go no further. Come on. Amen. At four years old in the hospital room a few days later, a few days later, a lady from our church, his, his Sunday school teacher, gave him a, a, a black 
board. I don't know what you call the board. But somebody make help me or whatever you call it, some kind of bulletin board type material. And 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 the Sunday school teacher told told our baby said said Caleb, I want you to take this and these and these uh, 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 brushes that I've got, and I want you to paint a picture of what you saw God do. Come on. And Caleb drew a picture of him laying on the ground. He drew a picture of the lawnmower. And then he drew a picture of a hand come down out of heaven and covering him. And he drew angels all around him that day. We still got the picture to this day. A few days, the next morning, the doctor came in. And the doctor said, I heard y'all had a little disturbance last night. And, and I heard that Caleb spoke to y'all like, like, did he really? And I said, yes, he spoke to us. He said, oh, yeah. He said, what did he say? I said, I said, doctor, I said, Caleb said that he saw God. He saw the hand of God come down out of heaven. Tears begin to run down the doctor's face. Come on. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, a few weeks later, come on, they had re reattached Caleb's leg. Come on now. They reattached his leg. He had, he had several surgeries and he stayed in the hospital for a long time. But the morning came, the doctor walked in the hospital and he looked at us and he said, you know what? He said, your baby's going to go home today. And he, and he had an IV in his arm. And, and we put him in... Oh, hallelujah. We put, him in a, we put him in a little red wagon. And if you ever go to the Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, come on, look for a little red wagon. You'll see them at different, on every floor. Come on, but look for one of them. One of them's got Caleb Tyler Allen's name on the bottom of it. We took him home in that wagon that day to the car, and we put him in the car. And while we're riding down the highway with an IV running through his body to fight the infection off his body. Caleb speaks from the back seat. He said, Daddy, what day is it? I said, Son, it's Friday. He said, Daddy, when's Sunday? I said, Sunday's in a couple of days. He said, Daddy, I can't wait for Sunday. I said, Why? He said, I get to go to Sunday school and tell everybody that I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Come on. I come to tell somebody tonight, I don't care what the before x-ray said, God's got an after. God's got a miracle. I don't care what they name it, what they call it. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. July, July the 20th of this year in just a month, about a month and a half, Caleb's going to turn 22 years old. They said he never would walk, but he did. They said he never would live, but he did. They said he would have brain damage. We think he's a little off. Come on, but he's all right. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on. At 18 years old, he took a job on a pipeline. He met one guy at the pipeline said, son, you'll never pass the physical. He went through the physical. The doctor looked at him and said, son, you're a walking miracle. Get out there and go to work. Come on. Two years later, or one year later, they gave him a promotion. Come on. A year, another year later, they gave him another promotion. I'm telling somebody in this house, God's ready to elevate you. God's ready to promote you. God's ready to take this church. Hey. Hey. Come on, if you need a miracle. I want the ministry to come with the anointing all right now. There is a supernatural move of God in this place tonight. They're coming to the music. Come on. They're coming to the music right now. Ministry, would you come and get ready to help me pray? Pastor, would you pour the anointing oil on the men of God's hands? I want you to pour the oil on their hands. I don't care if you got an addiction. I don't care what the doctor said. If you got a bad report. I don't care if you're going through 
tragedy, turmoil, hurt, pain, or tears. I want you to step out of your pew right now. Make your way to this front. We want to lay hands on you. If you hadn't been baptized, I want you to come. Let your pastor know I want to be baptized. If you hadn't received the gift of the Holy Ghost, I want you to come. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Come on, lift your hands in this house. My God. Come on, church family, would you leave the pew right now? Leave the pew. Step out to the aisle. Get your hand on somebody. Come on, if you hadn't received your miracle yet, be a miracle tonight. Come on, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, healing in this house. In the name of Jesus, deliverance in this house. They said you never will, but I got a God. I got a God. I got a God. Cause I know.
Would you lift your hands all over this place? Jesus. Come on, speak his name. Pray. 
if Caleb was here tonight and he walked in this place when you look at our son you would be able to immediately tell that he's been in an accident because he's got a limp but what most folks don't understand is is that one time this leg was almost five inches shorter than this leg now it's about three quarters of an inch shorter than the other leg. Some people look at Caleb and say, oh, what a tragedy. But we look at Caleb and we automatically know that our son has been in the presence of God. Come on. Come on, no matter what your circumstance is, no matter what your situation is, no matter how dark it is, I want you to let the Lord overwhelm you in this place tonight. want you to lift your hands all over this place. If you can, if you're standing by somebody, I want you to grab them by their hand and I want you to pray for them right now. You see somebody that's hurting or broken, I want you to go to them right now. Put your hand on them if it's appropriate. I want you to pray for them.
over this place. Is moving. Come on, the Holy Ghost is moving. Come on, church, would you pray? The Holy Ghost is moving. Come on, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. That's my every moment. Lord, you call my raging sea. Come on, let it flow. Express in Jesus' name in just a second. Before we do, the Holy Ghost has been pushing me into a corner. Man, I tell you, I don't, I don't want to get out of order. But I, I was thinking as he began to tell the story of his son, I was reminded of the story of my daughter. And then I was reminded of the story of my wife. I had only been here pastoring for about one month, five, six weeks, maybe. My wife fell in her head, fractured her skull. Before we got to Methodist Hospital, God had changed that. And her skull was no longer fractured. They said, Mr. Vanler, we can't tell you when she'll respond, if ever. We don't know if she'll ever respond. They said, we just, it's just a hope and pray thing. But if her brain keeps swelling and bleeding keeps happening, he said, we're going to have to do surgery, cut her skull out. We're going to have to move the pressure on the brain. She'll never be the same. And uh, God took care of that. In four days, I was pushing my wife out of Methodist Hospital, out of the neurocritical care. Jesus. I remember my daughter, it was four months later. That's why I just grabbed Brittany and brought her to the front. I remember my daughter, four months later, the Lord was, I guess, letting me be tested to see if I'd stay in this church and pastor. But I remember four months later, we was going to Atlanta, Georgia, and she couldn't breathe. She literally couldn't breathe. Her oxygen dropped below 70s. It was in the 71, 72 area. And they said, Mr. Van Lue, it, we're just going to be honest. We can't get her oxygen up. We've put oxygen straight into her nose. We can't get it up. They said, we're going to have to do a lifeline, what they call a lifeline semi. And uh, I remember driving behind that semi. My wife got to ride in the semi. I was driving behind it in the suburban. I was praying and talking to God. I said, God, I don't even know if you know where I'm at. I know what it's like to feel helpless and hopeless, but I also know what it's like to get on this side of the miracle and realize what God can do. And so tonight I was praised and I was thinking, and I was talking to God and I was praying for people and the Lord said, if I can heal those two, you don't think I can heal your father? And he said, you got to start thanking me for what I've done. 
So I went back and I grabbed Brittany, I brought her to the front, and I said, God, I thank you for what you've done already. If you never do anything else, if you don't heal this man at all, you're still a healer. You're still Jehovah Rapha. You're still the God that heals. I don't question that one bit. I believe in your healing power, but there's enough faith in this room right now that anything can happen. And I believe that if we would just begin to thank him for what God has already done, there is no telling to what he will do right now. Would you clap your hands as they begin to sing? And would you thank God as they sing, I believe you're my healer, Lord. Will you begin to thank God from a heart of thankfulness and gratitude? family come up here and 
Anybody else can group in around behind them, but please let the family come first. Let the family get up here around the baptism. night I know a lot of you couldn't see but Preston was up here praying and everybody gets the Holy Ghost differently but Preston got the Holy Ghost tears streaming down his face and just worshiping the Lord it was so beautiful and now he's made a decision he wants to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. He's already received the Holy Ghost. So, Preston Lafoon, upon the confession of your faith and your willingness to be buried in the likeness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I now indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You've already received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. the Lord and clap our hands to him. The Bible says there's angels rejoicing in heaven right now, and there's angels enjoying the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is rejoicing right now. There's a father that's glorified in the power of redemption. Hallelujah. What a great move of God. Brother Allen, thank you for preaching to us, building our faith again, and we believe that, that God can do anything, and he can do all things. Anybody believe that tonight? And as we go, we need to go praying for Brother Tom while we're in the spirit of faith. Brother Tom Blue Ball is at about, amen, with his uh, kidney right before church, Sister Angie told me. And uh, we need a miracle. We want the will of God, but we need a miracle in this Brother Tom's life. This is a great man of God. He is a great man of God. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not being morbid, but I've already told the Lord. Uh, when Sister Stewart left and when Brother LaDuke left, I said, God, uh, I don't mean this offensive to the next generation, but if you're going to start taking elders home, we got to have some people step up. 
There, there can't be just a gap, Lord. We got to have something here. And I'm going to be honest, I can't really lose this man right now. And uh, I want you to help me pray that God will work a miracle for this man of God. Will you do that with me? Amen. He already, he already knows what he wants to do, and I, I understand that. He's, uh, Brother Tom is, is he's not stubborn at all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, Sam didn't get that from him at all. Praise God. And if you'll buy that, I'll throw the golden gate in for it. Hallelujah. But we love Brother Tom. I know he's got his mind made up. So we need a miracle on behalf of the Lord. Amen. Touching his body. So if you will go, go with God. Go praying. Make sure you're careful on the way home. What a great revival we're already having. We're thankful for it. Amen. Paul said this. He said, I have needs to be in Jerusalem at Pentecost. He wanted to be there. There was a reason he wanted to be there. You're not going to want to miss Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And you're going to want to be here. There's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And uh, we've been at last Wednesday night was conviction. There was a level of conviction here. Tonight, there was a sweet level of faith. One I haven't felt in a while. Sweet faith. Not bold faith as much as sweet, powerful faith. Just rinsing me through. And I know that some of you felt it. I watched you. And I believe this Sunday is going to be unprecedented power in the Holy Ghost. If you believe that, shout amen. 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 We'll see you Sunday. Somebody tell somebody around you how much.